here we are guys. Here are your differences. You have the stock intercooler OEM, which uh, is a tube and fin design, and you have a VRSF five inch uh, heavy duty street intercooler, which is a bar and plate design. Now, pros and cons between bar plate to fin, this heats up a lot easier. It will heat soak a lot easier. This takes a longer time to heat soak. However, this also dissipates the heat from the tube and fin design a lot easier than this can di dissipate heat from the bar and plate design. So it's kind of a little more like give and take and it more so depends on what application you want to use for your car. Me personally, I'm not going to do much tracking. You know, I do more so like pulls and things of that nature, more daily driver, like daily driver-ish things. Uh, not necessarily commuting, but uh, just, um, you know, pleasure. And pleasure, I like a little bit of boost a lot. You know, I could go into boost a lot. But there's not, I'm not really hardcore thrashing this car. So this will be perfect for me because it it won't, like it's, it's not a repeated abuse cycle. So it will take a longer time for this to heat up. So I doubt I'll heat soak a lot with this as opposed to this heats up very quickly. So when I'm doing a pull, you know, one or two pulls, I'm tuned and it's out of there. Uh, another thing, this is built with uh, both aluminum and plastic. This is all aluminum. You see very nice welds. End tanks are aluminum. The aluminum end tanks do a better job dissipating heat than the plastic. And um, fit and finish wise, obviously OEM. Uh, this is BMW's original intercooler. So uh, fit and finish, I mean, this feels cheaper than this. This is, feels a lot more heavy duty, a lot more stable. If you guys know, we have what looks like a bigger front so you can see the end tanks on this you know fins and this isn't actually like if you see right here the intercooler actually stops before this this is just like fins so you get a bigger front face obviously so you go from top to bottom it's a lot bigger so you have a bigger surface area for the wind to hit and cool it down uh, if you notice it, this overlaps a bit so we turn it to the back we can see it's sort of like a step where this this is straight. This has an extra piece up at the top and it's thicker, a little more dense. Um, it won't necessarily give you, it, will, it won't necessarily give you a bunch of horsepower, like a lot of horsepower, but what it'll do is it'll keep your numbers consistent. So you're less likely to heat soak. And when you run this bad boy, you can run in, the car will give you full boost majority more of the time than the stock intercooler and it has better airflow. Now, one of the negative sides of going with a bigger intercooler can be like something bigger than this. If you're not making real, real high boost or if it's not really necessary, do not go any bigger than this because you'll run into issues where the, you're, you're basically creating more space for boost to, to fill. And what happens with that is you get a lot of turbo lag. So you can have a huge intercooler. You can put a huge intercooler about the size of a radiator in your car. And what will happen is the car still has to fill those uh, tubes up or to or fill fill those ducts up with air before you get that boost impact so uh, I don't think I'll be gaining that much turbo lag however what I will say is uh, and, and anything bigger than this for my application I'm only looking at this moment uh, a little over 400 wheel horsepower um, if not 400 a little over four that's pretty much what I'm looking for to the wheels nothing too crazy nothing too dramatic uh, the torque I'm pretty much looking at around let's say like a 480 maybe uh, with that being said, uh, I'll be pleased with the outcome no matter what. And we're going to go ahead and get this puppy in. I think that's all I've touched uh, with you guys. I'll show you guys a side-by-side -side comparison of the two. And uh, once again, shout out to Dream Chaser. Uh, now he has a 50 GT. It's beautiful. I seen it the other day. White. Beautiful. Uh, before he had F32. And I picked this up off of him for a discounted price. Uh, thank you, man. Thank you a lot. All right, so guys, the intercooler is in the car. The VSRF intercooler has been installed. I installed it yesterday. I actually took some time driving it around. Um, you know, buttoned up everything, make sure everything was tight. This is the OEM intercooler. My plans with this intercooler is to just keep it around in case I want to go back to stock and sell the car. And obviously the uh, performance parts that I have on it. So, with that being said, uh, it's probably going to lay around somewhere in a garage or I don't know, a house or something. Anyway, I thank you guys for tuning in and watching the differences of this intercooler versus the, um, 
the VRSF intercooler. I'll keep you guys updated, let you guys know, you know, um, I, am, are you going to have to get it tuned? Am I getting boost leaks? Just the fit and finish of the VRSF quality. Um, but yeah, other than that, um, we're going to get out of here. I'm just going to close this video out. If you guys um, check out link over here or here you'll see the install process and kind of like the same little brief description of the intercooler me putting it in and everything like that i'll definitely get some boosters for you guys some data log clips for you guys so you can see the um ambient temps versus the intake air temperature so yeah that's pretty much it i uh, don't think i have anything else to say uh you guys can like comment subscribe and i thank you guys for coming along this is mike we out of here